Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric and the day has finally arrived. It is Mortal Kombat time. Yes, Mortal Kombat 11 is on the Nintendo Switch. This marks the first time in a little bit that Mortal Kombat has been on a Nintendo console. You know Nintendo, the game consoles that are for children. You know, we got Zelda and Mario and Star Fox and cartoony Splatoon. Well, no longer, my friends. We got Mortal Kombat 11, which is one of the most gory, violent, iterations of the series to date it's finally arrived lots of people were wondering how is the switch version going to perform because of the weeks leading up to it we had next to no gameplay footage at all people were getting concerned and yeah we saw a minute or two here or there but you know what the game pretty much was released very quietly with not much known about it so the main objective for today is to go ahead and check out the Nintendo Switch version of Mortal Kombat 11. See if we can uh, sink our teeth into it or if we got a fatality this motherfucker right out the window. So guys, if you're brand new to the channel, go ahead, feel free to throw a subscription. <laughs> and let's go ahead and begin today's video. So Mortal Kombat 11, long-awaited game for me. When it was first announced for the Nintendo Switch, I was absolutely excited. I knew from that point forward I was going to be buying the Switch version mostly because the game is playable on the go. Now, I do have a PlayStation 4, and I have played Mortal Kombat XL, played the last few iterations of it, you know, and I was really impressed. XL was badass because they had everything included, but 10 overall was so good they made an X in an XL, and then, you know, 9 wasn't bad itself. Now, if you haven't played Mortal Kombat in quite some time, this game is actually really narrative based with its story mode. You have some catching up to do. A lot of the characters have, you know, had a lot of stuff happen throughout the years. It's almost kind of like a, a, uh, a movie series now with the way these story modes work out where you have a lot of cameos, a lot of callbacks to previous games, a lot of locations that people revisit, stuff like that. These characters actually have a lot of character development and we pick up right where the last game left off with Mortal Kombat 11. I'm not going to give away too much in way of spoilers. I don't want to show too much in cutscenes, but I will say right off the bat with the Nintendo Switch version, the majority of the cutscenes are actually really impressive. I was expecting things to be dumbed down just a little bit, but it looks like WB Games and the people that were on the development team for the Nintendo Switch managed to knock it out of the ballpark with the way that the graphics look like in the cutscenes. Sure, people are going to be nitpicky and say that, you know, maybe the hair looks weird and the eyeballs and everything, but it wasn't too bad, you know? It wasn't like, oh my god, this is totally horrendous. It wasn't like trolling eye levels, right? It was fair enough, you know, really good. It was actually exceeding my personal expectations for it. Now, the story of the game you know, it, it starts off with Cassie Cage, who's the daughter of Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, being brought up to being a commander. And they go on a mission to the uh, Nether Realm, and there is basically a a end all be all of battles there. Like we're at the biggest, huge final battle between the Earth World and the Nether Realm, and. You see Liu Kang, who is like now the Emperor, and Katana, and Kung Lao because of events that have happened in previous games. Uh, it's, it's, it's all out war, and they manage to escape, but the timeline ends up getting affected a little bit because of a character called Kronika, or Kronika, depends if you're Dr. Dre or not. And she is manipulating time and somehow the past and the future combine together and we're getting characters from previous Mortal Kombat making appearances like Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Baraka, Katana, Jax, a young Johnny Cage. All sorts of them are coming in and mingling with characters that are present in the you know, present timeline. So it's kind of like a weird multiverse type of thing. And it actually works really well. I found myself paying attention 
to the i mean you didn't really have a choice if you wanted to know what was going on but i found myself really enjoying the storyline and everything and it's you i would recommend maybe going back to at least mortal kombat 9 to get caught up to speed or you know forget playing those just watch the cutscenes on youtube and you'll kind of catch up to speed on what's going on there's a lot of surprises again cameos references stuff like that really well thought out story and the nintendo switch version i'm glad to say other than some slight loading issues when cutscenes do start there's not much in you know way of bad frame rates or bad graphic outlook or anything like that everything looks great as far as the performance of the actual cutscenes and presentation of the story goes with that said graphical wise gameplay I think it looks pretty good. I've, I've read some reports where people say in docked mode, they feel that it looks a little too grainy. I know the footage that I've captured for this game actually looks a little bit dark and grainy at times. It's kind of weird because at moments I would be like, wow, you know, on this stage, the game kind of looks a little, a little, you know, rough. And then there would be times where I'm like, wow, this game does not look bad at all. Now it's based kind of like a 2.5D type of environment. And the characters are fully rendered like 3D, but you're fighting on a 2D plane and you have a variety of, of moves and everything. And if you haven't played Mortal Kombat in a long time, I know your first initial thing to do is to test out Scorpion and Sub-Zero to see if these guys have their moves, you know, the down forward low punch and back back low punch. Gotta say, they did change the move set a little bit, but there is a move list that is accessible. There's even easy fatalities, so they did take a little bit of time to make sure that people were able to look up the moves and stuff like that. Because I remember back in the day, unless we bought a strategy guide for Mortal Kombat, we were pretty much shit out of luck. And, you know, like, we had to guess the moves and stuff. But everything's accessible. I mean, easy fatalities this day and age. Um... You can actually pick those up and do them. So anybody can do those brutal fatalities. There is a, like, I guess a, a fatal, like, move, like, power move type of thing where if your meter, your health meter gets really low enough, you could do that and it does deal some damage. These are actually pretty brutal. It's kind of like the x-ray attacks where you zoom in, you stab people in the eyeballs or you shoot them in the head and it's pretty gory actually i was like wow these could actually be fatalities themselves uh it's a standard fighting game if you haven't played mortal kombat by this point you're about 25 years behind you know each character has their own unique move sets and stuff their own theme actually you know like scorpions fuck fire you know sub-zero's uh freeze and then you got like weird insect creatures with like devora you have noob sabot who's like a shadow based type of character so there is a variety of people for you to try out and stuff and tons of moves and there's customizable options too that is a big feature that i saw actually talked about in a game informer magazine not too long ago by boone himself they talked about how you unlock stuff as you play through the various modes you know story mode there's towers you know there's two different tower modes there's a classic tower mode that's like classic arcade mortal Kombat, where you go up the towers and you fight enemies one at a time there's even timed ba um towers uh where they rotate throughout time they're up there for like a limited time and you have to check them out but that one has modifiers for your enemies and yourself actually you know enemies might have certain modifiers that give them an advantage and kind of give you a disadvantage you know things like stage hazards or things that assist them and stuff like that it's a little goofy not my cup of tea but i did check it out anyway because some of these modes actually have unique unlockables that help you in other modes you know you might unlock something in story mode or tower mode that you can use in the crypt mode the crypt mode returns that is an actual popular mode that i remember seeing in deadly alliance where you can go in and unlock some more stuff with the currency that you earn through playing the games so there's three currency there's gold there's orbs and there's heart currency um some of them are harder to come by the heart currency is done by getting fatalities accomplished and things like that the orbs come at you when you win and the gold just for playing i do feel that they are going to do some transactions some micro transactions coming up for people to pay to earn more currency and stuff that hasn't really been completely set up the store that is available there's a premium tab and an eShop tab the eShop currently has like shayo khan 
and Frost available for you to buy and download. Uh, and then there's also a couple other customizable things like that. But the main reason why the crypt is a huge part of this is that there's so many chests you explore in a third person view. It kind of looks like a little knockoff of Skyrim and you explore this huge, huge crypt that is actually the original setting for the original Mortal Kombat, which was actually really cool because you will see some scenery and stuff and you'll recognize like, oh my God, this was the stage where you fought such and such. And it's actually really cool to see a lot of references to the original Mortal Kombat in this game. Again, a lot of the unlockables are customizable stuff for your characters, you know, like new mask, new colors of your clothing, new designs for your weapons, and things like that. Microtransactions will probably be eventually in this game, but right now it's not as microtransaction-y, if that makes any sense. And it kind of, I'm kind of worried because this was a full price $60 game. You know, having DLC come out later or paying for a fighter pack is one thing, but nickel and diming just to like be able to unlock stuff is another. And I don't want to get into that whole spiel or whatever, but you know, that's gaming now. <laughs> but I will say the main gameplay experience for Mortal Kombat 11 was a lot of fun. There is online play, online leaderboards for your rankings and stuff like that. I absolutely suck online. I did encounter a couple of issues with staying connected to matches. I had a couple crashes with online gameplay, but it didn't happen too much. Um, it, it actually, it made me feel embarrassed to see how bad I lost at times. Even though to be fair, there was one guy that was spamming Noob Sabot's freaking attack, his throw attack repeatedly. So I do feel that they will eventually, you know, tinker around with some things, tune up some of the characters, nerf some of the characters, and you know online experience should be a lot more better uh, it seems like this game is nintendo switch online uh required heavy you know to get like the time towers refreshed you got to have online to get unlockables on certain modes you got to be connected to these servers for mortal kombat 11 or else it'll kind of like save your rewards offline until you're able to connect somewhere so unfortunately with the nintendo switch being a portable system I do not know how that's going to work. A lot of people might not really want to play any of the modes that uh, that hold your rewards for you or anything like that. It's almost kind of like, why, why are you going to play the game offline if you're not going to get awarded for it? But I've been told certain, certain game modes do keep track of what you do offline. So maybe once you find a stable connection, you can log in and get your rewards. But I know that there's probably one or two where it doesn't keep save. Uh, I can't think of what they were off the top of my head, but I do recall reading on Reddit where some people were kind of mixed about um, their reactions on that and not really sure of how it works or anything like that. But uh, I usually play docked at home, so I'm not too worried about that. Now, speaking of docked and portable, the game runs amazingly portably. As a matter of fact, it looks really great <laughs> like on the mini switch screen. Uh, I was impressed. I play on the go still with the controller, the pro controller separately. Uh, it's just my way to go. I think the D-pad and everything on the pro controller works a lot better. There is a little bit of issues with playing on the Joy-Con. For my personal preferences, I feel that you really need a D-pad to really get some enjoyment out of fighting games, especially Mortal Kombat. So I don't recommend using the Joy-Cons and everything. But this was everything that I hoped the game would have been. It exceeded incredibly exceeded way past my expectations mortal kombat 11 actually is a very good port for the nintendo switch i know a lot of people are like saying oh well i've heard it's bad i heard it's a broken mess i actually saw somebody comment on my instagram earlier saying oh the game's a mess and a lot of people are returning it i guess it's tomato tomato whatever you personally would like you know, I feel maybe if you're more competitor, uh, a competitor game player, maybe you would need the PS4 version or the Xbox. Who knows? For me, the Switch version is more than good enough. It exceeded my expectations for it. All I need and want is a Mortal Kombat game that I can sit down and play. Because I'm not, I'm not a competitive gamer. I, I don't really care about that. I respect it. It's impressive. I have never been, never will be, and never will claim to be a competitive gamer for Mortal Kombat. And if you're a Switch gamer and you're concerned about how Mortal Kombat 11 performs on your console, fear not. 
I personally think it is a great port. I bought this day one. I didn't get a review copy of it, so I didn't have it on hand for weeks or for a few days already. So this came out of my own hard money. So I know some people take reviewers, you know, opinion and stuff with a grain of salt. And I just don't want anybody to think that I'm full of it when I say this is actually a must own Nintendo Switch game. If you have a Switch, this is a must own. If, that, if this is your only console, it is a must own. If you must, then maybe you would consider getting the PS4 version so you don't have to worry about the whole online, offline thing with traveling. For me, I like to play shit on the go if I go out of town, so I had to get the Switch, and it's my main console of choice. I might consider double dipping and getting the PS4 version. The Collector Edition looked pretty cool with the scorpion head, but it's probably a little too late for that. But I got my Mortal Kombat 10 in mask, so I'm good to go with that. And guys, again, Highly recommend it on the 8-bit Eric game grading scale. I would give Mortal Kombat 11 an 11 out of 10. <laughs> you get it? Pun intended, right? Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching as always. If you're new to the channel, again, feel free to throw a subscription. It is completely free to do so. And like, dislike, comment. I will see you on the next one, guys. Have a great day. Peace out. Consider supporting 8-bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description. Three, two, one.